Imagine lying awake at night, your mind racing as the weight of debt presses down on you like a heavy, unshakable burden. You try to find comfort, but all you can think about is how deep the hole has become, how overwhelming it feels, and how impossible it seems to ever climb out. This isn't just financial stress, it's a cloud that darkens every corner of your life, leaving you anxious, exhausted, and searching for a way out. For me, that mountain of debt was $800,000. Yes, you heard that right, $800,000. It was a sum so large that at times it felt impossible to overcome. But here's the thing that debt didn't just teach me about money, it taught me about life, about resilience, about the power of education and action. And today, I'm here to share my story with you. Not just to tell you how I paid off that debt, but to show you how you can do the same, no matter how much you owe or how impossible it may seem. The first step on this journey is perhaps the hardest admitting that you have a problem. It's easy to ignore debt, to push it to the back of your mind, to make minimum payments and hope that somehow it will just go away. But the truth is, ignoring debt is like ignoring a wound that needs treatment. The longer you wait, the worse it gets. I had to confront my debt head on. I had to sit down, look at the numbers, and face the reality of my situation. This wasn't easy. It was painful, it was humbling, and it was a wake-up call. But it was also necessary. You can't fix a problem if you refuse to acknowledge it. So the first step I took, and the first step you must take, is to admit that you have a problem and commit to solving it. Before you can tackle your debt, you need to understand it. Debt is not just a number on a piece of paper. It's a complex financial instrument that can work for you or against you. There are two main types of debt, good debt and bad debt. Good debt is an investment in your future. It's the kind of debt that helps you acquire assets, things that put money in your pocket. For example, a mortgage on a rental property or a business loan that helps you grow your company can be considered good debt. These types of debt can generate income and build wealth over time. Bad debt, on the other hand, is a liability. It's debt that drains your resources and puts you in a worse financial position. Credit card debt, high interest loans, and any borrowing that doesn't result in the acquisition of an income generating asset fall into this category. When I was $800,000 in debt, most of it was bad debt debt that wasn't working for me but against me. I had to get serious about understanding what kind of debt I had and how it was impacting my financial future. You need to do the same. Take a hard look at your debt and classify it. What's working for you? What's working against you? This understanding is crucial because it will inform your strategy moving forward. One of the most important lessons I learned during my journey out of debt is the power of financial education. The reason many people end up in debt in the first place is that they simply don't understand how money works. They don't understand the principles of investing, of saving, of managing cash flow. They make decisions based on emotion, on impulse, or on bad advice. I was no different. When I found myself deep in debt, I realized that I needed to educate myself. I needed to learn about money, about how to manage it, how to grow it, and how to use it to my advantage. So I started reading books, attending seminars, and seeking out mentors who could teach me what I needed to know. And this is something I want to emphasize to you today, financial education is the key to financial freedom. If you're in debt, the first thing you should invest in is your education. Learn everything you can about money, about debt, about investing. The more you know, the better equipped you'll be to make smart decisions that will help you get out of debt and build wealth. Once you've educated yourself, the next step is to create a plan. A dream without a plan is just a wish. You need a clear, actionable roadmap that will guide you from where you are to where you want to be. Here's how I did it, and how you can too. Step 1. Assess your situation. The first step in creating a plan is to assess your current financial situation. This means taking a detailed inventory of all your debts, your assets, your income, and your expenses. 
you need to know exactly where you stand before you can figure out how to move forward. When I did this, I found that I was in worse shape than I thought. My debt was spread across multiple credit cards, loans, and unpaid bills. My income was inconsistent, and my expenses were out of control. But as painful as it was to see this reality, it was also empowering because it gave me a starting point. Step 2 Set Clear, Measurable Goals The next step is to set clear, measurable goals. It's not enough to say, I want to get out of debt, you need to be specific. How much debt do you want to pay off, and by when? What steps will you take to increase your income or reduce your expenses? What milestones will you achieve along the way? For me, the goal was to pay off that $800,000 in debt within five years. That was my big, audacious goal. But I also set smaller goals along the way paying off one credit card, saving a certain amount of money each month, and so on. These smaller goals kept me motivated and gave me a sense of progress. Step 3. Create a budget and stick to it. A budget is a critical tool in your debt reduction plan. It's your roadmap for managing your money, for making sure that you're spending less than you earn, and for directing as much money as possible toward paying off your debt. I created a budget that was realistic, but also disciplined. I cut out all unnecessary expenses, reduced my spending on non-essentials, and focused on living below my means. This wasn't easy, it required sacrifice and self-discipline, but it was necessary. And here's an important tip once you create a budget, stick to it. A budget is only effective if you follow it. Don't let yourself get distracted or tempted to deviate from your plan. Remember, every dollar you save is a dollar that can go toward paying off your debt. Step 4. Increase your income. Reducing expenses is important, but so is increasing your income. The more money you can bring in, the faster you can pay off your debt. This might mean taking on a second job, starting a side business, or finding ways to generate passive income. For me, this was a game changer. I started looking for ways to increase my income. I took on extra work, I invested in opportunities that could generate returns, and I focused on building streams of income that would help me pay off my debt faster. One of the best ways to increase your income is to invest in assets that generate cash flow. This could be real estate, stocks, or a business. The key is to focus on investments that will put money in your pocket, rather than take money out. This is the difference between buying liabilities and buying assets. Liabilities cost you money, assets make you money. One of the most effective strategies for paying off debt is known as the snowball effect. This is where you focus on paying off your smallest debts first, while making minimum payments on the larger ones. Once you've paid off the smallest debt, you take the money you were putting toward it and apply it to the next smallest debt, and so on. This strategy works for a few reasons. First, it gives you quick wins. Paying off a debt, even a small one, feels good. It gives you a sense of accomplishment and momentum that can carry you forward. Second, as you eliminate each debt, you free up more money to put toward the next one, which speeds up the process. I used the snowball effect to pay off my debts, and it made a huge difference. Each time I paid off a debt, I felt a little bit lighter, a little bit more in control, and as I saw my debts shrinking, I became more motivated to keep going. If you're struggling with debt, one of the most important things you can do is communicate with your creditors. Many people are afraid to talk to their creditors, but the reality is that creditors would rather work with you than see you default on your debt. I reached out to my creditors and negotiated lower interest rates, extended payment terms, and in some cases settlements for less than the full amount owed. This wasn't easy, and it took time, but it was worth it. By reducing my interest rates and extending my payment terms, I was able to make my debt more manageable and pay it off faster. Don't be afraid to ask for help. If you're struggling, reach out to your creditors and see what options are available. You might be surprised at how willing they are to work with you. Paying off a large amount of debt is not easy. It takes time, discipline, and persistence. There will be setbacks. 
There will be times when it feels like you're not making any progress, but the key is to keep going, no matter what. I faced many challenges on my journey out of debt. There were times when I wanted to give up when I felt like I was never going to get out of this hole. But I kept going. I kept pushing forward, one step at a time, and eventually I made it to the other side. And here's the thing the journey doesn't end when you pay off your debt. Getting out of debt is just the first step. Once you're debt free you need to focus on building wealth, on creating a financial future that is secure and prosperous. This means continuing to live below your means, continuing to invest in your education, and continuing to make smart financial decisions. One of the most important lessons I learned on my journey out of debt is the power of mindset. Your mindset how you think about money, about debt, about your ability to overcome challenges plays a huge role in your success. If you believe that you're never going to get out of debt, that it's impossible, then that belief will become your reality. But if you believe that you can overcome this challenge, that you have the power to change your financial situation, then you will find a way to make it happen. I had to shift my mindset from one of scarcity to one of abundance. I had to stop thinking of myself as a victim of my circumstances and start thinking of myself as the architect of my future. This shift in mindset was critical because it gave me the confidence and determination to keep going, even when the going got tough. Once you've paid off your debt, the next step is to start building wealth. This is where the real fun begins. Now that you're no longer weighed down by debt, you can focus on creating a financial future that is secure and prosperous. The first step in building wealth is to create an emergency fund. This is a fund that will cover your expenses for three to six months in case of an emergency. Having an emergency fund gives you peace of mind and protects you from having to go back into debt if something unexpected happens. Next, focus on investing in assets that will generate income. This could be real estate, stocks, or a business. The key is to focus on investments that will put money in your pocket rather than take money out. Remember, the goal is to create multiple streams of income that will provide you with financial security and independence. One of the most fulfilling parts of my journey out of debt was the ability to give back. Once I had achieved financial freedom, I realized that true wealth is not just about money, it's about making a difference in the lives of others. Giving back can take many forms. It could be donating money to causes you care about, volunteering your time, or mentoring others who are struggling with debt. The important thing is to use your financial success as a platform to help others. For me, giving back has become a central part of my life. It's a way to pay forward the help and support I received on my journey. And it's a reminder that wealth is not just about what you have, but about what you can give. In conclusion, I want to leave you with this thought if I can pay off $800,000 in debt, you can overcome whatever financial challenges you're facing. It won't be easy, and it won't be easy, and it won't happen overnight, but it is possible. The key is to educate yourself, create a plan, take action, and stay persistent. Believe in your ability to overcome, and you will find a way to make it happen.